Happy Friday and welcome back to the shop. I have two things for you here. First, I want to share a new shop acquisition just to make you guys jealous. Uh, second up, I'm going to show what I went through and what I've learned trying to make an in, inside and outside D-bit chamfer tool. So, hope you enjoy. See you next time. First, I just want to mention, I was watching one of Shark River's videos and he mentioned there's a Facebook page of machinists selling stuff. And I did a little surfing and sure enough found it and it's fantastic. It's all local people and it's got more on it than Craigslist. Uh, prices are kind of ridiculous though on many items on it you know a stare at one inch micrometer four hundred dollars come on but in any case craigslist uh type in machinist and here craigslist machinist is nothing but toolboxes occasionally there's something like this on it so i saw this wanted 130 dollars for it and one uh, 12 inches 18 inches 4 inches measured the one I have and it was 12 by 18 didn't bother measuring the thickness turns out it's 3 inches this thing's a beast so I emailed through Craigslist and this was Saturday and never got a response so okay come Sunday uh, I go and check and yeah it's still there it's still available uh but now it's dropped to 110 dollars okay and just for grins and giggles i went over to the facebook machinist page and he's got it listed there at 110. so i contacted him through the facebook and within a few minutes he did call me um drove there to look at it it was outside kind of really messed up dirty um so I brought a test indicator, the Mitutoyo 10th guy with me, and it seemed like it was okay. Paid for it, got it home. Now, all I could do to get this sucker up on the bench, this thing is really heavy. Um, cleaned it up and ran the indicator over it, and this guy is just fantastic. Uh, it's, it is tool room grade, um, same as the other one that I have ran the indicator in my other one and it was it's still cherry and spot on so um was going to get it because i was going to do lapping on it but this is like gorgeous um the finish on this when you look at it at an angle in the light it's like glass it's just shiny and my other one isn't even though they both feel the same um, and also, while he was at it, this was sitting next to it, and he just threw this into the deal. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. So now I've got this giant, beautiful, crystal pink <laughs> Starrett tool room grade um, heavy monster. I have no clue where I'm going to put it or my other one. It did come with the top, which is over on the other um, plate right now, kind of a cheesy top, so thin. But I'm thinking too, you know, glass, I I don't do much on this thing. I do lapping and minor stuff, and somehow it's got a lot of scratches in it. So I'm thinking if this can get scratched, glass, so can this. And same as my other one. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> I could move this over to the electronics bench because I don't want it here. I'd like my workspace here. But here it is. <laughs> granite surface plate hundred and ten dollars crazy okay granite plate is gone it's over on the electronics bench I was thinking I don't have anything that will chamfer the inside of a hole I've seen people do it with like a square or something that has an insert but I don't know how they get the clearance down here so I was thinking about doing it with one of these guys but I'd have to like really chop off <laughs> even if I chopped off I couldn't do this hole with it so that's out 
I saw somebody doing it with a D bit. So I've got D bits, but that's really too <laughs> steep. So um, put that in there carefully. Remember, don't push on it because it goes right through the plastic into your finger. So um, I don't use this at all. And looking at it under the stereoscope, the tip is pretty wrecked. So I was thinking, take this guy, bore it out or drill it out, quarter inch hole. Then I've got this. This is the drill rod, and I was miking this, and this is actually what was it under, over something? Oh, this is oversized. That's what it was by quite a bit. And I'm surprised. I thought drill rod's supposed to be on the money. No, this is that's quarter right there so it's under this is undersized by one and a half foul this must be the harbor freight one yep it's got labeling on it that little package of different cutters that you can get for harbor freight for three four dollars that's what that is this is the drill rod and it's over I thought it was supposed to be right on the money but it's not not clamp on it yeah this is over by almost a thou eight tenths or something so same old problem where <laughs> the drill bits undersize it so that doesn't go in there so my choice is to use this guy and what I was thinking about doing is you know you can make it a D bit or I can just um, flatten the top and then come in at whatever angle I want. But I think I was just, I was going to go all the way, just make a, like a 45 cone on it and then flatten the top. So all these different things came out of the drawer. And it's been so long I've forgotten. This was for boring bars, I know. That was to make them. I don't know what these were for now. They don't even really go all the way in there would be kind of nice if it did but I'm not gonna mess with them I did them for some reason this guy is what I'm gonna use I need to do a flat so that I'll have a reference here clamp it clamp it in this guy this way now I can do all of my different stuff and then yeah I can just put it in a collet and do the cone so I guess let's go over to the grinder and see what trouble I can get into. Need a quarter inch collet. Where is it? There we go. Right here. Quarter inch 5C. Alright, got some lights on here. Let's see. Drop him. Get this guy in there. There. Got it. All right, what side do I want to do? I'll have the text down there, why not? Tighten him up. So this is just to do the flat. Am I all the way back? Yeah, I'm all the way back on that. And that guy, I've got plenty of room to move. Get him over closer to the wheel. Yeah. So this guy's, ooh, I'm not that, huh, huh, huh. Uh, I want to go back there. I was scraping the wheel. That's not going to do much of a flat, uh, folks. I got to go a lot further than that, huh? Uh, this is why I wish you could just tilt the whole thing down. Um. That's not going to give me much of a slot, so I'm going to have to use the crank. Yep. To really give me that flat. Oh, I can move further. There we go. That's pretty good flat. Alright, well, I guess I'm going to do this off camera here because the vacuum's going to run and all kinds of noise, so I'll figure it out here. Alright, it's got a pretty good flat on it. I wish this angle wasn't in there, but I'm not sure how to really take care of that. 
Uh, didn't it did start getting a little bit hot, but oh well. So now I guess I'll just set up for doing the D bit part, the flat part. Okay, set up to do the D bit part if that's what you want to call it. This I'm gonna wind up making another one of these. I gotta check something out. So this was the gibs were way too tight. Couldn't get it in there compared to the other one. So the dovetail on this is wider than what was on here for the collets. Oiled like crazy, but it just jams right there. It just gets stiff. <laughs> Easy to move here and sloppy. You get it up here and now. So I gotta do some work on this, check it out. Um yeah, that guy's slightly snug, huh? Yeah. So, well, <coughs> I'll do it. I got no choice here, but... Alright, bring it in. Wow, that sounds strange. Because I'm in this aluminum thing? I don't know. So I got the micrometer behind me here to check this when I'm at half. Jeez, man, that's just not, that's pain in the butt. My only choice is to just loosen that give up a lot. Where's the wrench? I think this is it. Just deal with the slop. That one and this one. I think it's the back is this uh, really, oh yeah, it's easier. Not so much easier, but it is. Jeez, it just sticks. This wheel seems to be hanging in there a lot. It just doesn't wear out. I haven't really had to redress it, anything. How far am I? Uh, that's, it's going in there and it looks like it's straight too. So. Up for a bit too at times, let it cool off. It's not really hot yet. I think I'm going to try to make something too where I can tilt it. If I'm going to bother replacing this particular thing, it goes pretty fast. Oh, there I am. Oh, that's nice and straight and flat. All right, cool. It's working. Huh. So, and then after this, I need to put the other one back in and cone it. So, bring it back when I'm kind of done here with this part. I am right on it. It's amazing how you can just take off a few thousandths at a time easily. But as far as I can tell... I am less than a half a thou up, like 25.25. So I'm going to call it quits right there. And I guess set this thing up now to do the cone. Actually, the wrench is here. No, I got rid of the wrench. Oh, I've got other wrenches here to take it out. See how it looks. I mean, it looks nice and straight on the face. Is this the right wrench? No. Of course not. Why would you be the right wrench? This one is. So that comes loose, this comes loose. There it is, alright. So yeah, wow. <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Oh, I did set it for 4 degree relief. So if this is registered, this should be angled this way, 4 degrees. Uh, can I tell? Actually, it looks like it's the wrong way. Uh, i got to think about that. All right, this was this way. And I tilted it in. Yeah, so that should be correct. Doesn't look like it, though. Looks way the heck off. All right, granite plate time here with a square and see what happened. Pretty good so far. Yeah, it was at the wrong angle for some reason, so I put it back in. 
and really tilted it so I got it right now this is pretty nice it's just made of a cone can't remember whether I said but they put the little arrow here for zero and I think you can see it here I put a little scratch straight line in the paint here and I lined that up with zero now I can see it easily so I need to go this guy yeah, to a 45. Oh, he's like jammed in there. Oh, it's loose. Okay. So, what have I got there? It's 10, 20, 30, 45 degrees right there. See how easy that is? Because I can't see that. And put this guy back in here. Clamp him down. And stick him on free play to just spin. Bring him up. Where am I with this? Uh... Yeah, it's pretty far out. Okay. So I have lots of room to go, huh? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, bring it in a little bit more. Actually, where is this knob? Oh, it's way in there. All right. Oh, that just came loose. All right. Well, I got to fix that, but that's pretty far away. Oh, that's very close now. All right. So, oh, I got to be in further so that the point is where the point's going to be is there so here we go huh and this knob bring it in and here it is just simply doing oh that yeah i'm turning it the right way because i don't want to put a burr on the cutting edge so just a matter of tape going in it's really small so I'm using a Q-tip with water on it to keep this thing cool. Actually, let me put a drop on it now so when I see it boiling, I'll know it's hot. There's a drop, but no, it's going to fall off, right? No, it won't. Oh, cool. Stay in there. So far, bubble, the drop's still there. This is pretty simple and easy. <laughs> Alright, I guess when I'm done here, I'll show it to you. Oh, I gotta, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna off camera take that tool holder over to the middle, use a gauge pin to locate the existing hole, um, then drill it out for a quarter. And so I'll probably next bring you back when I actually have this thing um, on the lathe. As usual, doing anything for the first time is always a learning curve. So in hindsight, um, the quality of your work is only as good as the quality of your machine doing it. So, uh, obviously, the sticking problem here was causing a problem trying to keep things straight. Um, so, investigating what was going on, gauge pins in there, this guy is straight. So, the problem turns out to be this guy. Um, he's a tight fit, real tight fit. And the screws here had him off center so as it got pushed in now it started to bind so loosening the screws pushed it all the way in tighten the screws works perfectly now no binding um, the other thing I didn't like like I was saying in the video was when I was doing this flat reference spot back here there's an angle to it so looking at the machine I'm gonna make a new base that this slides in and it's going to be angled that way I guess yeah it's got to tilt things down so I'll just dovetail the bottom and that goes in there to slide and then I'll machine this guy at a down angle so I can change the base if I want to get things straight not sure what the angle is going to be but there it is uh, on this guy um, <laughs> realizing um, coning it when you tilt it for the relief um, 
this point here winds up being higher than this point. So it's got a problem doing that. Um, I didn't need to do the relief because I could have easily put this on the granite plate with a square and locked it down. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, this one's on the flat surface. No, it's the other way around. This is on the round surface. This is on the flat. I loosened that, rotated this until it's now flat. No relief. Tighten that up and then tighten him. And I've tried it. It works nice. I'll show you guys here in a minute. Um, what else was there? Yeah, honing it. It's kind of tough when it's that small. I definitely need to be make one of those wheel slow RPM things to do the honing for me because you just can't really hold it that nice. But I've got a nice razor sharp edge and it actually works on both edges so I can do an outside and an inside. Um, not sure how small. I can go pretty small diameter uh, hole and chamfer the inside. Cool tool. Uh, the other thing I was thinking about is um, I've got the two different quick change tool posts. One's from Harbor Freight and the other's uh, uh, A to Z or whatever. I think I'm going to get another Harbor Freight, put it on both machines because I have a lot of these guys and then I should be able to switch them, use all of them between the machines. So otherwise I'd have to make another holder and another tool and all that so I can have this uh, capability on both machines. Uh, let me take it over to the lathe. I'll try to get the camera as close in as possible uh, so i show you guys how it's working. Okay, hopefully this thing stays in focus and the camera is mounted on the cross slide. So uh, let's go with low RPM here. There we go. So try to, I can't really see what I'm doing. This is the only thing I had in the junk drawer that I've got a hole on. Jeez, and I cannot see where I am. I think I'm there, all right, well, yeah. You can see it just takes it right off really nice. And I can go pretty deep. So that's, that's an inside, let's do an outside chamfer. Things wobbling like crazy. It's an ugly cut, huh? All right, outside chamfer. And it does a really nice job on the outside. And I can go pretty deep too. When I was playing around before, it starts to chatter, but really nice tool. Okay, well that's it, folks.